One of the questions I get most often in my virtual styling sessions is how do I tweak a look that is pretty basic or you know, like my staple outfit formulas that the look feels styled but not contrived? I think this is a great question because it brings attention to the fact that we don't need to add more things to our closet. A lot of times it's just expressing our personal style through these tiny tweaks. So I've got little tweaks that you can make to your outfit that take less than 60 seconds to do. Okay, let's jump on in. I wanna start off by saying that you don't have to employ all of these things in one outfit. You don't even have to employ any of these. I think it's really about looking at your outfit and even assessing first if something's missing or if it needs a tweak. I find all of these little 60 second styling tweaks only look and feel authentic when there's some functionality and practicality behind them. I don't think we should be tweaking our outfits just for the sake of it, because that's when it feels contrived. So the first is like a little series, like a trifecta if you wanna call it, tucking, cuffing, and rolling. Let's start with cuffing and rolling our sleeves. I think cuffing and rolling your sleeves looks really good when it's done to play with proportions, to perhaps show a little bit of skin if you're wearing something oversized or if you've got something with a lot of volume or that is boxy. And you need to balance out that volume and boxiness by showing a little bit of skin and doing it via cuffing or rolling. I personally love cuffing the sleeves of more classic tailored items like button-up shirts. I pretty much always cuff these sleeves because I like the way cuffing and scrunching it in sort of a really messy and undone way juxtaposes and add a little bit of tension to that crisp tailoring. I also think it's really important to do with this shirt because it is boxy and it is a little bit oversized on me. So to balance out the visual, to make sure I'm not getting lost, I especially make sure I have both both the buttons undone pretty low and my sleeves cuffed if I'm wearing it out, if I'm not tucking it in, because then there's no definition. So not only do I have a boxy silhouette that I wanna balance out, I also wanna balance out that oversized proportion on me. Another example of this is where I'm wearing my chambray shirt. Here it's untucked. I don't have any definition, but this look does require a little bit of visual balance in the proportion. So I'm gonna do that by showing my skin in my forearms. And again, keeping my buttons undone low. I don't think you have to do both, buttons undone and a cuffed sleeve. I think you could just do one or the other, but I like to do both. That's just how I am. Here's an example now where I don't love cuffing the sleeves right away, and that is when I'm wearing my oversized men's Calvin Klein button up. I kind of like how the cuff comes way past my hand. I know it like makes absolutely no sense. I especially like it when it's layered underneath a sweater. And because they are so, so long, eventually when I have to start like, you know, functioning like a normal human and actually using my hands, I end up just scrunching up the sleeves really quickly. And it feels more purposeful and intentional because I actually do require the use of my hands. Let's talk about cuffing your jeans. I think I actually did an entire video on cuffing and rolling. I will leave that up here for you. you Usually if something is feeling off in my look, the first thing I look to tweak is proportions and changing up the hemline of whatever you've got on can really help with this and tweak and it doesn't take long at all. Perhaps you've got jeans that have been cuffed or rolled for a really long time since that was a very popular look and way of styling our jeans over the past few years. Maybe all you need to do is unroll them and uncuff them and see what that does to the lines in your outfit. Or on the other hand, maybe you wanna show off a shoe Maybe you do want to change up the proportion. Maybe you want to like add a little bit of edge, give something a little bit more of like a playful vibe, then see what your denim looks like cuffed. I think it really will depend on the proportions that you want to achieve that day and how you want to balance them out with the rest of your look. Let's talk about tucking in your shirts and sweaters. I actually did an entire video on this. Don't ask me how, like nine minutes of your life talking about tucking in sweaters. It's up here for you. But again, it is kind of important because it's a tiny little style tweak that might help you appreciate and just change the way you see your clothes. The front tuck, the French tuck, whatever you want to call it, became so popular, I would say like in the 2013, 14, 15 era. 
zone, whatever, when French girl style became quite popular and when we started noticing all of the cool like French editors at Fashion Week. But I think it is still a fantastic styling tweak that takes less than 60 seconds. However, it can feel contrived again if you're doing it just for the sake of doing it. When we are tucking shirts in, it's to add definition. It's to create some definition in the overall look. It's to change the silhouette, especially if you've got shirts, tops, blouses, knits, whatever, that have some nice breathing room and that sit quite far off the body. This is where they can be the most effective, no matter your shape or size. I know a lot of you don't love tucking and that's totally okay. Everything has to be done in like your comfort level and what you like. However, I do think this is a really good look that can be achieved depending on how you want your overall silhouette to look. Nothing wrong with not tucking either. It just depends on where you want your hemline to fall. Where do you want the definition on your body to be? That's what we're looking to do is we're kind of looking to give the eye somewhere to go when it's looking at the overall outfit and doing a little half tuck can do this really easily. I love doing a little half tuck because it allows me to show off my beautiful brave leather belts. Yes, shameless plug. I co-designed this one with the fabulous people at Brave Leather. They're an incredible Canadian slow fashion company. This is our newest colorway for spring. I'll leave a link for you down below. But sometimes if you want a look that feels a little bit softer and a little bit more like chill and relaxed, you don't need a belt. Belts are really popular right now. But if you like the look of a tuck, but don't want to draw so much attention, like if all you want to do is give that little slight bit of definition and change of the silhouette, then you can totally do a little half tuck without a belt. If you've got a top that is quite fitted, I would avoid doing the front tuck only. I would give it a full tuck all the way around. Again, this feels more intentional and it also just works better with the fabrics and the silhouettes that you're working with. I find there's no point in only tucking in the front of a tightly fitted top because you're already achieving that silhouette of definition at the waist, right? When you're wearing a fitted top, obviously the point is to have that definition in the entire upper body. So give it a full tuck. Otherwise, that's when it feels contrived. But again, not tucking is just as much of an intentional decision as tucking. Here's an example in my Canadian tuxedo look where I am not tucking it in. My next styling tip is to change out your purse for one that has a little bit more hardware. Or if you don't have a purse that has a bit more hardware or shine to it, then switch it out for a purse that is a different color or texture. I find an interesting color has a bit more of a visual punch than a purse that has an interesting interesting texture, but it really depends on where you fall on like the minimal maximal scale. So that's going to be completely up to you. But for example, just swapping out your regular everyday purse for one that has a little bit more shine to it can make a huge difference. It brings up the look to feel a little bit more polished without being too fussy because you're not piling on the jewelry color. Maybe it's a bright colored purse that, you know, you probably purchased thinking that you would add color to your closet and then you never end up wearing it because it's a bold color and you're worried about matching. At least that's what happens to me. But here's the thing. I think in this case, don't worry so much about color. Don't worry so much whether it matches with the rest of your look. Just try swapping out the purse, make it the one pop of color or that one interesting piece and see how that goes. I think a lot of good looks are born out of things that have a bit of tension and combinations that are unexpected. And literally what is the worst that can happen if you wear the wrong purse for a day? Like, like really, I mean, I'm still waiting to come up with an answer to that one. This last one is going to come as no shock and that is to play with your accessories. I think taking things away from your outfit can be just as powerful as adding things. So if you are missing something, try adding a little bit of shine by way of maybe a heftier earring. Or maybe if we're looking at necklaces, instead of having like your typical short necklace layered with a pendant, maybe you pile on a series of shorter necklaces to give a different visual heft around your neck. I don't think there are any rules. I think it's really something that you learn by trial and error. And the good thing is, 
throwing on an extra necklace or taking one off literally will take less than 60 seconds. And I think you'll know pretty quickly as you try them on, whether you like it or not. For me personally, trial and error and that visual and how I feel in it is what triggers whether something looks or feels good on me or not. So that is what I have for you today. I might have more of these little styling tweaks up my sleeve. So if you want to see a part two to this, do let me know in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, if you made it this far, I hope you had a wonderful week or that you're having a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. Ciao.